this talk today. Um, I'm not sure if you have already had a look at uh, uh, Toshiaki's show downstairs, uh, but uh, we uh, today we have uh, Toshiaki Hikosaka, who is sitting right here, uh, a young Japanese uh, artist, a painter, uh, based in uh, Kyoto. Uh, he's been uh, showing uh, um, in many places, uh, mainly in Japan, Tokyo, Kyoto, Hyogo, uh, everywhere, but also in, in Hong Kong in uh, 2016 as well. I'm not going to go into much detail about his show, uh, because we have uh, uh, Eiko Honda, Miss Eiko Honda, a curator of the show at Daiwa today, and she will uh, give you more detailed uh, information about the show later on. Now, uh, right next to uh, Hikosaka-san, um, Toshiaki, is uh, Professor Sunio Mangani. Uh, he very kindly agreed to be a discussant for, for uh, Toshiaki today. Uh, we, we are sorry that uh, our invitation was rather a short notice, but uh, we are so happy. Eventually, we found him, uh, Sunil, uh, to discuss with uh, uh, our artists. Uh, professor Sunil Mangani is a professor of theory, uh, practice, and uh, critique, and director of uh, doctoral research at the Winchester School of Arts, University of Southampton. And I, I presume you have some experience in, in Japan as well, or? Yes, I, I do go there quite regularly, yeah. Oh, okay, great, yeah. great. So, that um, was an accident. <laughs> okay. so, yeah. <laughs> uh, today, the procedure is that uh, Toshiaki is going to show us uh, some um, uh, PowerPoint uh, presentation for about 20 minutes. And then uh, Sunil okay. will be joining uh, in, in discussion. Uh, and then after that, uh, we will open the floor to, uh, to you, the audience, to give any uh, questions. Uh, I have to warn you, uh, Toshiaki's uh, art is quite difficult to understand. And uh, um, Honda, Miss Eiko Honda here, uh, she might be able to give you uh, a little bit of uh, explanation about the, the, the show, particularly the show at Daiwa. So can I hand it over to you? Please. Well, thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, it was very rather last minute uh, notice, but we were very extremely pleased to have uh, Professor Mangani to join conversation with Toshi tonight because I think they're a perfect pair. And I was trying to stop them talking too much upstairs because the, the conversation was so good. And <laughs> trying to save it for tonight later. Um, so uh, Toshi's, I think, um, I don't think your work is difficult. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think, um, uh, <laughs> um, but then I, I do have to admit that I, I see Toshi very much as an, an, an philosopher as much as a, uh, an artist, and and he, I think, uh, you very much sort of ma manifest your thinking process um, in the practice of um, painting. So. Um, you pose a lot of questions to everyday phenomena from um, the way we perceive objects and everyday things from fire to ocean waves, as you will be able to see in the talk. Um, so we discuss a lot about um, how um, painting, you, you discuss um, how painting, you perceive it as more of a medium, or a phenomenological medium, I would say. But, um, yeah, I think, um, I think you can explain it better than Thank you so much, everyone, for coming today. So my name is Toshiaki Hikosaka. So I'm the painter who made the artwork for this exhibition. So we are pleased to welcome Mr. Sunil as a guest speaker discussant. 
Thank you, Mr. Sunil, for kindly accepting my invitation to join me tonight. I'm here today to, today to talk about my practices that I'm showing at this exhibition and other two important practices I previously worked on. So first, I'd like to talk about the theoretical inquiry of my practice as a whole. All of the artworks began from the same question of how I could draw. Because I'm a painter, it's very important for me to continue to try to be a painter. Then, I consider the act of painting and touching as something that exists in equal values. More precisely, the making of art, artwork begins when I perceive the experience of touching being touched as a construction of a two-way interactive relationship. So for example, if you slowly move your fingers of both hands to each other, their shadows touch each other before the actual fingers do. As I watch the colliding shadows over the two distant fingers, I began to think firmly that I want to think about the ways in which the structure of this touching being touched exists. <clears throat> this exhibition consists of my three practices that I worked on to reflect on how one could experience the feeling of touching the fire. One of the rooms exhibits a video and drawing installation and another room shows photography works and painting works. I would be happy if you could think how the artist had tried to touch the fire and how the bilateral relationship is in balance in these practices. I think the title of each artwork will also be helpful in imagining this. So I'd like to go into the detail of each practice by looking at their title. So that title of this work was named after the, after the Italian artist Giuseppe Penone's work that we will remember the contact. The Penone has illuminated the way in which a sculpture exists as a gesture by investigating how it might be possible to engage with nature. Now, I'm a painter. The subjects I engage with are imagery and phenomena rather than objects and matters. But I have an affinity towards the practice with which Penone has engaged for a long time. If we put the title of the exhibition and the artwork <coughs> side by side, you will notice that the subject of the exhibition title, To Look at the Fire, is us. Whereas the subject of the artwork title, The Fire Will Remember the Contact, is a fire. In other words, this suggests the mutual and bilateral relationship that exists between us and the subject. Anyhow, let's look at how this artwork made, was made. The work consists of the three exhibit drawings. I photographed each of them and simply arranged the three photographed images like one, two, three, one, two, three, to turn them into the animated image. I made these drawings by drawing lines vertically and horizontally with a gray pen, as if I scanned the printed out image of the candle. Following the tip of the pen with my eyes, the areas that didn't disappear from the pen lines are the information of the image. And despite the same act repeated on each of the images, the slight differences occur in the images. My personal feeling is that the fire of the candle leaves an impression of forcing itself to move. Now let's move on next practice. So this practice also focus on, focuses on how I could construct 
the relationship of touching being touched. As a subject of work, to explain the procedure of making the work more concretely, I took photos while walking around outside when it's dark, like early morning hours. When I capture an image, I make sure that I use the flashlight of the camera and hold a, a square plate approximately 2 cm by 2 cm. That won't penetrate the light in front of the flash. <coughs> this leaves the shadow in the center of the subject on the image, and the shadow prescribes the subject. I named this work making process burning camera. If I could take a photo with a burning camera, I imagine the fire of the camera would il illuminate the subject matter, and at the same time, the shadow of the camera would fall onto the image itself. I tried out this method of practice at various locations from London, Japan to Greece. So let's move on. next practice. So with this work, I made drawings over, over a photo image that relates to fire. The fire rapidly moves and keeps changing itself, but the practice is to trace this and draw them at an incredibly slow speed. I overlay the question addressed in the title with the feeling of tracing in a slow motion, as if one gets lost in a city. I have been working on this kind of practice while changing the subject matter since 2003. The, the act of tracing in a slow motion facilitates a new way in which dialogues could exist. And it plays the fundamental role in my work as a whole. I think about how important it is to get lost. Let's look at some of the work from Goldsberry. This was, was made in 2007, 2008. Yeah. So let's move on next practice. So from this work onwards are uh, works that are not shown in this exhibition. The joining line, Shigeo, is a video work attempted in 2013 with my grandmother, Tachie, based on the dialogues with the portrait of my grandfather, Shigeo. The photographic image used in the recording is a portrait with the resolution lower to an extreme. And I trace the grid formed by the edges of the pixel salary with my previously learned technique. What quite fragmented lines traced with the closed, closed eye interfered with the original photographic image to generate numbers of variations. The picture which presents the, represents the closest image of the grandfather to the memories inside my grandmother is derived by presenting these images to, to grandmother with a question. Please choose a picture which has the closest image from your memories to the grandfather. Leading to her value judgments of alike or unalike using a knockout formula. Let's take a look. Take 
to me. I learned very well. So this work also about trying to touch the image of my grandfather that my grandmother holds, so which we will never be able to see ourselves. Or if we slightly change our perceptual angle, the work can also be understood as a very orthodox painting. It performs the traditional function of a painting as a way to recall someone who is not there. And lastly, I would like to discuss a recent project I worked on. This project is based on an anecdote of Joseph Hiko, who is known as the first publisher of civil Japanese language newspaper in Japan. When he was 13, he was once rescued by an American Martian ship from a disaster in 1951. At the time, on the ship, when Hiko only knew Japanese language, looking at diaries written by the Americans, he misunderstood that they were sketches of ocean waves. One can imagine how this misunderstanding greatly changed his lonely life on the ship. For the actual artwork I made in Iceland last year, I took a photo of the ocean surface at the local beach print it out on the paper matching the size of the local newspaper, and make a drawing with a white pen on top of it. The drawing differences the layout of both of photos and words on the local newspaper published each day, and I published my work every day during the residency period at newspaper sketches of ocean waves. I then overlay the newspaper and print out the image of the ocean, one on top of the other, and gradually draw a line against the areas of the printed words as if I was writing a sentence with cursive letters. I set a rule whereby I would try not to forget, the, forget to trace the shape of the ocean waves that remain on the photograph of the ocean surface as I move the tip of a pen. In other words, the line would be drawn while my consciousness was suspended mid-air between my attention to writing words 
and attention to directing the ocean waves. So if I learn to far toward the toward one side of this consciousness, I found that the line I drew become too lively and very poor. The difficulty of drawing without being partial to one or other of these two types of focus, of maintaining balance, of keeping my consciousness in mid-air, is similar to the way in which it's difficult for one's body and its perceptions to avoid automatically imposing its own pre-existing idea or understandings on everything encountered. I will be making a new version of this work this entire month of August by the Seto Island Sea at the Fukuyagi Museum in Japan. We are related to Hiko's history. I hope to expand the project at various locations around the world in the future. To conclude this talk, I'd like to discuss why I have been practicing this kind of way when, when I try to construct the relationship of touching being touched with the, with the subject matter. It can also be said that I'm searching for a way to understand complex things while keeping them in their complex state. While I want to do so, I realize that contradiction emerges as I try to do so. Each of the practice I discuss today individually brings out the phenomenological feeling of touch. This feeling on one hand would connect the west and east side of the city. On another hand, this makes me think of a situation where the road would become an obstacle for people who want to go from the south to the north. To draw is, perhaps, an experience just like this. I try to create a bridge between myself and the subject. But in the middle of that, it all of a sudden emerges as a wall in front of my eyes. It's very important for me to continue to try to be a painter. Thank you everyone for listening until the end of my presentation. say thank you very much for inviting me. I think I was thanked far too many times for being here. So I'm very grateful for being here. Thank you very much for the invitation. And thank you for going through your work in that way. It was, it was very nice to see. I think, I think it's often really difficult to judge how much as an artist you want to talk about your work and how much you want to let it, let it be. But obviously for tonight's purposes we're going to, <laughs> we're going to talk about it. Um, there's, there's various things you've said just now that I want to pick up on, but I also had some points of my own before I came here, so I tried to bring some of those together. Um, maybe we should start off with this question of paint. <laughs> paint. If, if your work is difficult to understand, I think one area is to get to grips with this idea of you being a painter. So let's kind of let's go straight into that. Um, yeah, you know, clearly your work is, is derived through kind of drawing and painting practices. I can clearly see that. Um, but you are also engaging in a, in a much wider set of image practices. Um, and I think that could range then, there's a sort of relationship between material practices, but also kind of image processes as well that, that are beyond uh, often the kind of material. So um, I think we can explore some of that. I guess this has also really changed over time for you. So maybe to start with, 
I mean, because I want to come back to the works themselves more, but maybe we could start by hearing a little bit about your practice earlier on. Uh, where did you begin? I presume it's often the case for artists, they say, well, I began by painting, but, and then there's this shift. Can you just go back a little bit before these works? Um, is, there a, is there a more traditional drawing painting practice that you begin with, or have you jumped straight into this kind of work? You can also in Japanese. Yeah, Japanese. sure. Yeah. Mm. Mazu boku jishin wa sono painting toyu ka sono yujutsu teki na imi de no painting no education ke te mas te. First of all, we, um, he never had an, uh, a technical education of the painting. Okay. Mm. Okay. De ichiban hajime no step toste. Uh, the first step. Boku ga tsune ni kangai te iru no wa mitsuran sono so what I what I kept thinking um, as a first step, even before I started making these works. So the way the way in which one understands new things. And how to to come to know something. To get a grasp of grasp of something. So first of all, I have this desire to understand and know these things, these questions. Of course, I I think that I regard painting as the a most suitable uh, practice to. Uh, to, to consider in order to engage with these questions. But so right at the beginning is these kind of questions that I just discussed. And while, while I think about these questions, I need to I need to start to think think about paintings, approach painting as a kind of experience. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's that's quite a common idea I think and we we often hear the phrase painting in the expanded field. Do you come across this phrase yourself or is it painting in the expanded field? I mean, if you if something you're familiar with. Mm. Mm. Okay. Yeah. But it's interesting. You don't. I'm, I'm really interested in this. Actually. I'm slightly confused. Actually, you you don't seem to feel strongly like you you say you didn't have technical training mm. in say painting and drawing. And yet, you're very strong about presenting yourself as a painter. I think that's really yeah, unusual. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I, so I, I want to kind of leave that as attention because I'm really struck by that. Um, I, I, it's very noticeable seeing you there um, drawing the grid mm -hmm. and also just seeing the mark making in the waves pieces. So in, in joining lines where you're, yeah. you're working through those grids, um, Clearly, you have a very instinctive mark making. You're, there's a very strong sense of that. Have, have you always? Is that something you've always been aware of? That you, you, that your sense of drawing the line is is clear to you, and because that to me seems to, to be a way in which you define yourself as a painter. You've got some sense of mark making. This. <laughs> I think, I think uh, one is to, um, in thinking about experience, uh, I, 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 I think it, it's important to uh, look at the fact that um, how um, eyes and hands move together. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's coming through. So that, and that maybe brings us to this thing about touch. Yeah. So, Let's, let's talk about it a bit more, because I think then touch is a way in which, again, you're, you're defining 
painting and drawing in particular, or you're seeing that as a, a physical in, engagement the, to, to reach out, to touch, to make the mark, is certainly one way of touching. But you're obviously also interested in the idea that touching is not always physical, it's, it's also maybe mental, or, and you talked about a very lovely image you gave of the, of the shadow. The shadow can often touch before maybe the, the, the object um, reaches that point. Um, so, uh, are you, and so that's where I can understand you, you I think it was mentioned, <coughs> you mentioned at the very beginning, the sort of phenomenological uh, interest in painting. So, this is where we get away from painting as simply, you know, brushes and things on canvas and mixing paint and. Well, it's not that kind of wet sense of painting all the time. But you're, you're interested in some kind of um, bodily engagement and also, um, I guess, something to do with composition and, and the ways in which you're spacing yourself, objects, your viewing, and your vision. And that's, where I, and that's maybe where I start to understand that's your meaning of painting. But painting has a particular way of engaging with the world, seeing, being seen, um, having to mark as well as not see. So typically, um, you know, and De Derrida has written about this, as soon as we touch, we make the mark, it becomes blind because we can't see yeah, its points. So, so, okay, so is that, so if we just, uh, let, let me just hear you say a bit more about that because that's how you understand this idea of touching then, is it? That it's, it's a, these different layers of a physical space that you're rendering, you're both in and you're trying to render in some way in, in the art world. It's a bit longer than this, but it's going to be a little bit longer than with me. What's the difference between the art? I think what I, how I'm a bit different is mm. so the reason why I make artwork is to in order to think about something. Mm. So uh, when I make something at that point uh, when I move my um, Eyes and hands, um, that thinking process. If I put this differently a little bit, so, for example, a researcher is in the process of writing a book, and he's 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 writing a book, and an output process of their thinking. Mm -hmm. So to me, um, there are these sort of preconditions of um, the, my con preoccupied concern is to think about something. To touch to think about the process of touching. Yeah.で、僕の作品っていうのは実践っていうのはなので、まあエッセイっていう形でもいいと思うし、メモのようなものだと思っているんですけど。Mm. Mm. Mm. Um, so my practice could be called as an essay, but maybe also as a sort of memo of like notes, mm. memorandum sort of notes. Um, mm -hmm. So, um, in, in a sense, maybe it's not an artwork, <laughs> but um, oh, yeah, I, could, I Um, this conversation reminded me of how, um, so before we, oh, while we are organising this talk, that uh, um, um, he kindly uh, sent us an email with this initial thoughts, and, and in that email you mentioned how um, you were struck by there's two different processes of drawings going on in his work, 
and uh, to draw, I meaning to draw lines, but also to draw out something. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. From the world, <laughs> through the image making, yeah. uh, by the process of drawing. And um, I think how you um, put that into that phrase um, really articulate uh, the process of touching quite well, mm -hmm. that um, by drawing, that uh, mm. physically drawing, but at the same time, metaphorically, you're drawing something out from the world. で、メモなんてごめん。あの、自分が何かをしたことに対して何かが返ってくるっていうことの一連の流れがとても大切になる。うん。で、それはその、because to between the subjects and yourself. I think, um, but in my case, I think uh, I push this aspect very particularly, um, more sort of accelerated manner, in order to uh, um, realize that, to realize that. That's why um, you think about it by thinking about this process of touching and being touched, um, it helps <coughs> me to continue carrying on thinking. Mm. It's funny because our language often, we feel like it sort of breaks down because you start talking about thinking, but at the same time, I sense some hesitation, but you, you, you sometimes we uh, maybe thinking feels like it's um, colonizing in some way. Uh, mm -hmm. What can happen through making? But then maybe that's just because we we tend these words get the better of us because actually thinking is a form of making often, and writing, for example, is a making. Um, there's a lovely uh, description by the novelist Martin Amis. Uh, not to kind of necessarily uh, advocate for his books, but there's this nice, um, he talks about when he's handwriting his novels to begin with, and then that shift where he types them. And he says, there's nothing like the, the paper. He said, if I gave you a sheet of my novel, you wouldn't be able to read it. My handwriting is terrible. But on the paper, I can move everything around. And he's, he's got all these marks. And I think there's a way in which we can sometimes Worry that words like write or what writing falls into some sort of category of um, finished or uh, <coughs> thought but somehow composed. Then, of course, when we see your newspaper works, these are a form of writing. Um, we don't necessarily read them. I mean, the story um, uh, of Hickel's um, Holmes, where he's, I, I don't know if you did say it to everyone, the, He's on. He, he. It's during the period where uh, Japan is closed off to the world. He gets shipwrecked. He ends up being saved uh, by uh, a passing American ship. He's on board there. He sees an American's diary, but mistakes the right the handwriting for waves because for him that cursive that particular script looks like scribbles. You know, looks like. Um, and it, so it's really interesting because there's these different kind of archives of writing, I think. But um, Roland Barthes, uh, writing about uh, Rishé, the artist, um, talks about the idea of the enormous text. And I think what he means there, you know, certainly in that period where he's interested in 
uh, writing as a kind of an expanded notion that it's, it's a way of engaging with text as well as simply just passively reading something. It's a way of uh, making through, through reading. Um, that the, the enormous text, I think it's seen, it's sort of everything. Because, and certainly that theory, the idea that semiotics might somehow make a reading of the whole world, I think was, on, you know, was emerging, and, or, or in a way it was on a decline, I suppose. Um, but, in a, but then in this piece where you've got these, this writing overlaid on waves, it's almost as if you are drawing out, and it's maybe going back to this thing about the drawing here, you're drawing out a language or a script even that does exist, but of course it's not a script that we we know how to read. It's not our script. It's not anyone's script in a way. It's the waves script. But it, uh, of course, then if we shift over into science, there is a way of actually starting to to study that and to to learn it in a sense. And, and of course, we can emulate waves in with algorithms now in, in computer software and so forth. So, um, so sorry, I sometimes digress a little bit because I just want to quickly come back to this thing about drawing in the drawing and drawing in and out in a way because. Maybe that's one way of us just talking about the works that are on display here. Clearly, there's a there's a site of drawing that's yours. That's the it's the production. It's and that's and that, that's this notion of tracing. Um, and I use that word in a complicated way, I suppose. What you're trying to deal with, what you're trying to think, and what you're watching, and, and so forth. But then I suppose there's also this drawing that you engender. For us, going into the space, into the work, and I'm, maybe this is for both of you because there's, a, there's. I have a question here about installation as well of the work. Um, if we start with the piece, the candle piece. Um, apologies, it's, yeah, the, the fire will remember the contact. Um, I mean, I still want to go back to you making that actually, but let's just stick with what see watching it anyway. Um, on the one hand, there's a way in which you're drawn in. It's it's spectacle. I'm I walk I walk into the, I, first of all I've got to walk into the space. I've really got to go and move into that space. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm confronted in a way with an image with light, and I'm typically with light and that kind of enlightenment idea. The light is used to draw you to what's important. So there's a kind of drawing in there. But in another way. What do you do then, once you're there? And I, I, I suppose I'm interested in what you imagine happens in that space. I mean, I can add to that myself, but because I think there's been a process of drawing out, which way I can, but I, I'd rather just pose that as a question mark. So you've drawn us in. There's this beautiful, you know, quite sublime spectacle, really. Um, what happens there, do you think? And I know it's a bit of an unfair question, because it's, it's maybe for us, but and, and, and maybe for yourself as well as a curator and making those decisions on that space. So when I when I think about um, paintings, uh, I always thought of it as a media. で、メディアっていうのは何かをこう知ったりとか理解したりとか見たりする時のある形式だと思うんですけど。Media um, is a kind of form that uh, exists when one think about something。初めはそういったメディアを考えられ始めた時っていうのはそのみんながそのあそういうフォームでこういうものを見るとこういう風に見えるんだってことがわかるんですけど。In the beginning um, sorry. <laughs> so I, I think media was, for example, language was used very in a very conscious manner at the very beginning of it. でもそれどんどんこう使っていってみんながみそのプロフェッショナルになると mm. But as it becomes a, quite a normal practice, a real practice, and, and everybody becomes a professional of the user of that medium, i.e., language, for example. Mm. Mm.
and the media become transparent. Yeah. Yeah. すごくあの難しい問題なんですけど、そのメディアが透明になるっていうことを、I think this is a, a little bit difficult、uh, problem or issue to think about, but、um, when media a media become transparent になることをそのなんていうんだろう、一応こう不安定な状態に戻すっていうような。作業としてその作品とかインスタレーションっていうのがあると思います。So um I think artworks and art installation exist as a way to destabilize um destabilize this environment that um or 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 our um understanding of how these media became transparent.、Mm-hmm. そのロウソクの作品に関して言えば一方でそのすごくスペクタクルな感じにも見えるんですけど、so、when, we were, I would talk about the candle piece、うん、スペクタクルな感じに見える it can, it can be seen as a spectacle in one, one,、うん、one sense よく見ると but if Almost to look very closely. For example, a candle is a drawing of a candle. For example,、um, right across the candle image, the, the video work,、um, there are three drawings of the candle. The candle is a candle, and 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 the candle is a candle. And、usually, the、um, candle exists as a way to look at something, something else. Well, in the work, the candle and the drawing are the same. But within this artwork,、um, art installation, if you sit in between the drawings and the、uh, video piece, you can see that the drawing is the same. You can see that the drawing is the same. You can see that the drawing is the same. You can see that the drawing is the same. You can see that the drawing is the same. You can see that the drawing is the same. You can see that the drawing is the same. すごくドローイングが見づらくなる。And it becomes quite difficult to look at the drawing. でそれが僕の少しそのインスタレーションの中にあの挟み込んでいるその透明化したメディアを不安定なものに押し戻すっていうような技術がそこに入っていて。And so there exists is that a kind of、um, technique where I wanted to slip in.、Um, A technique that can destabilize this、um, relationship s almost of the media、mm. um, that became transparent in the world every day. I mean, that's a really lovely way of explaining this. It's beautiful. And I, for me, the one thing I thought it drew out was my eyes. You know, it, I think I said to you at one point, the candle looks bigger. <laughs> It's got sort of a bit wider. You know? and it's, It's lovely that sense of disarming of us. That one of the things you've got to do with that work is, is watch it. You've got to stop. You, there's this time, there's this vigil. To, and I, but I like the way you're talking about it. It's kind of vigil to media,、uh, that we, we need to, to, to light.、Um, and, and yes, the, the, the works on the wall, on the one hand, they are obscured by Uh, your shadow, and of course, it's a sort of virtual light as well because it's certainly not the light of the candle, it's the light of the screen. But it creates these shadows. But at the same time, your eyes adjust, and those, those drawings do open up as well. So that, the whole dynamics do change if you give it、uh, your time, doesn't it? So, did you? Yeah,、um, so maybe that, that point also relates to how, how you wanted to hang the painting. It's about symmetrical way on the next, the other room.、Well. Yes,、yeah, so、I wanted to come to that. To to <laughs> so, <laughs> so let's let's slowly、yeah, move to the other room. <laughs> and but I want to, just want to stick with this thing about the medium for a moment because,、mm. and, and not not to dwell too much on this thing about painting. But I suppose one question I have is, why are you not a photographer? Because we're dealing here in a way with the medium of light,、mm. and the candle is. Is a light source. You then, it's a virtual light in this case, and, and all of the light of the screen.、Um, 
It is a kind of index. Um, and um, we move over into the other room. And certainly the, the, the plus pieces we see on the floor against the wall are photographic works. So why, why, so what if, why are you still holding on to this? I don't, I don't want to actually dwell on the painting, but I'm still interested in, for example, you don't just refer to yourself as an artist, or you don't necessarily refer to yourself as, say, a photographer or an artist of light, maybe. I, 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 I don't know. It's good to go to you about it. There are several reasons why. Mm. One of them is a kind of coincidence. So. <coughs> So these photography pieces on the floor, mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, I was taking photos uh, with flashlights in a similar process at night while mm -hmm. I was walking around the town, my neighborhood. And I, init I was initially thinking of um, um, more rather violently um, using the flashlight and taking photo of um, places where people live and, uh, and um, overcasting the square shadow onto their houses. But as I took photos, hundreds and, and um, thousands of photos, あの、I began to realize that within this black square it's not completely painted off it's not complete yeah. darkness but uh, by uh, casting the shadow that it brings out imagery as well yeah so when I when I looked at this image, I, I just realized that uh, this is very similar to how I practice my drawing. Yeah, yeah. But that's one of the reason, and the other reason is. One is to use the to use I, I have been actually thinking about how I could draw without using my hand for a long time. So these are the two main questions yeah. uh, that I have, uh, uh, so two main reasons that I have. Um, I think you're doing really well to maintain a painter because I'm, I'm, I'm with you on this. I, I think it's really good. Um, do you know Marion Milner's famous book called On Not Being Able to Paint? Mm -hmm. I think it's Marion Milner. It's called On Not Being Able to Paint. It's from mm -hmm. the 1950s. And it's funny because she... It's this book about... She's a, she's a psychoanalyst. So she comes from this sort of Freudian sort of background and, you know, um, psychology and so forth. And, and she takes up drawing and painting, sort of as an amateur. Mm -hmm. And she, she reads all those books that tell you how to draw. And of course they always tell you, you know, draw a circle and then another circle and then you turn that into a body and you make a dog. Or... And she gets really frustrated with it, obviously. Because she thinks, well actually, these don't look anything like, you know, what a real dog looks like. And then she starts trying to draw things like a cup or whatever in front of her. And that's when she starts to realize that this thing doesn't have any edges to it. It doesn't have boundaries. Mm -hmm. And I suppose that's what's really interesting when you're talking about is that you're using photography, which you know typically doesn't really show up the edges in a way. It, it's, it's this kind of, you know, it's, it's captures the light source and so forth. But by using this technique you've got here, this blurring goes on. I, I can see you're interested in this, the bits between where, you know, where it's, that's, you know, the shadow, the, where the square is, but it, then it sort of bleeds a bit. So I guess this is the area that starts to to draw you in, because you, that's where, again, this thing about touching and being touched, it's revealing both uh, where something doesn't exist. Uh, you know, this is the wall, 
they, what's this? You know, and it's sort of, right. is, is, that, is that kind of, again, it seems to me this thing about touching and being touched, that it starts to touch us with things we didn't know was there. Um, I, I can see then that's, that starts to relate more to this painting practice where traditionally a painter is feeling their way through the form. And you're sort of doing this in a very quick way with, with the photography. So it's a quite, I suppose it's quite liberating breathing in a way. As you said, not using your hands, you, you let this happen. And that then, so that goes back to just thinking about the spaces down there. You seem to be, and this is where I want to come to the final, the, the pieces on the high up on the wall. Um, your, because the, 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 um, these pieces, sorry, we've just been looking at, um, they're, they're very glossy, yes? So you're, you're wanting to, uh, sorry, uh, could you just, sorry, um, um, the, these pieces are, you're using very glossy finish, so you're getting that reflect, the, the, the reflection. So you, again, you seem to be, you're not just drawing us in to this image, which obviously you kind of do, I mean, with literally one on the floor, you can't help but kind of want to fall into it. This one is that, isn't it? Um, but you, you then destabilize that relationship by, I start to see my own body. I sort of intrude into this image because I, I'm reflected. And that to me just kind of re sort of reveals that sense of light in the room, that I, you know, I'm part of this medium, going back to your thing about medium. So, so I can understand there's a kind of sense of medium for the whole space, the whole room is medium. And it's, it's revealing this, again through, it's the medium of light. So can you just talk me through the, the, the other works on um, banging on the wall? So how, how does this figure, because in a sense that he's cut into the, the, the space in, in a slightly different way. So why, can you talk through this some more? So it's very simple. No, it's not. Then you're So I think I think there's quite a common assumption or a common practice of a manner manner in which how people are supposed to look up a painting. Yeah. So for every, for every single medium, I think there are, even if we don't realise, there are a particular set of ways that we are used to looking at that particular media. With this artwork, I wanted to escape a little bit from the the manner that one's supposed to look at artwork. Okay. And you talked about also um, about how how if we if we you if we were to exhibit the um, painting in a more conventional manner, then your artwork sort of into noise or something. <laughs> So yeah, you, yeah, you don't want them just being these paintings on the wall and you'll go up and move on. There's, there's, there's a engagement with the body, isn't there? I mean, you really have to kind of decide how to position yourself with these. Ah, the the, yeah, the literary of these, the, how much of that was a discussion between you? I mean, at what point do you make the decision that this work is installed this way? Or you know, is it is it a point of making them or is it after you've made them then you start to think about after after and then is that very much your decision or else that it, is that something that comes through the work and it's very much so you come these you know, pieces were exhibited before in Japan yeah so you, and it's okay yeah well, and why why these works get hung this way and then say the other two pieces in the room why are they positioned the way they are I mean what's how do you see that choice, but also the relationship between them? Photography pieces. 
少しわからないような状態の中。So, I have nominated um, so, um, with photography pieces, I wanted to, I wanted the, his work to not necessarily be, obviously appear to be nominated. Yeah. So, it's Well, it's glossy. And it's large. And so when um, and if it's if one of them is leaning against the wall and the other one is on the floor, they are on the floor. And these gestures, those, these installational gestures, was a way to point out the uh, materiality. Mm. 